Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series in uh, animal physiology. So, we have finished uh, three weeks, now we are into the fourth week. So, in the third week, we started talking about the muscle and uh, we ended up at the sliding filament theory. So, this week we will resume our journey into the muscle and slowly we will merge on to the nervous system because they are very interlinked and it is very difficult to you know separate out where I should draw the borderline because anatomically they may look different structure and you know, there is muscle there are neurons, but there are a lot of functional interactions which takes place and which kind of blurred the line what you draw between these two systems. So, one such line blurring of the line takes place. Last week when we talked about the sliding filament theory, just have a recap so that I can exactly point out where the blurring starts. So, we talked about the actin myosin arrangement, the self assembling of actin myosin forming the smallest functional unit which is termed as the sarcomere. Such millions and zillions of sarcomeres eventually generates the force, right. So, I told you in a normal resting condition, the myosin heads. So, if you remember the myosin are formed of two heavy chains and four light chains and it forms a head like this and on top of that you have the ax uh, actin, right. So, in a normal condition, the myosin heads are not in physical interaction or chemical interaction with the actin. They may be close by like this, but there is no interaction as per se, okay. But the reason, since we are recapping, the reason is myosin has a binding site. This myosin head which is there has a binding site on actin filament, right. Actin filament is made up of tropomyosin, a long chain and an actin filament and the binding site for the myosin is covered by the tropomyosin, right. And there is a, another protein there which is called troponin, which has three attachment sites. It has an attachment for actin. It ha it has a attachment site for tropomyosin and it has a calcium binding site, okay. Apart from it, there is a fourth feature in the actin filament where we have the myosin head. So, let us recap what all four things actin has. Actin is made up of actin filament, tropomyosin filament and troponin and it has two more features it has a calcium binding site and it has a active site. So, the calcium binding site is present on the troponin, okay. Whereas, myosin head binding site which is also termed as active site is at a separate location. Now, under normal condition, this myosin head binding site on this actin tropomyosin filament, generally it is called actin filament is not seen. So, myosin head cannot see that particular binding site, right. But then when in that matrix of sarcomere, the calcium arrives, calcium binds to troponin, step 1. As soon as calcium binds to troponin, it removes the binding site for the myosin head to the actin. So, now the myosin head 
binds to the actin like this. And as soon as the myosin head binds to the active site of the actin filament, there is a motion like this, which is called the power stroke, which happens. And that brings a contraction in the muscle, right? This is what we talked about. And these are some nanonewton forces which are generated at, a, at an individual actin myosin head site, some femto nanonewton individual molecule. And that is what I told you as the nature's motors or molecular motors of nature, where there is a stroke like this. Okay? So, imagine, so this is such a big thing, imagine it is in a nanoscopic thing, how this will look like. Okay. So, if such stroke is taking place with millions and millions of it, that, that will sum up to a huge amount of force and that is what you use. Now, where is that blurring line? First question, from where this calcium came? What is the genesis of this calcium? Because what we see in muscle is at this point, what we learnt about muscle is a physical contraction. It is a mechanical activity which took place in muscle. But before this mechanical activity, something else happens. Muscle initiates this activity either, either spontaneously all by itself and such thing happens in the case of cardiac muscle. We will come later into that. But in the case of a skeletal muscle, unless otherwise it is auto twitching, twitching here I mean is the contraction, there is a prerequisite of getting a neuronal signal and that neuronal signal leads to the first wave of signaling, which leads to the contraction. So, there is a very thin blurring line there. We will come back to this later and which will take us. So, we have talked about the sliding filament theory briefly last week. Today, I will put two terms. Okay. So, we are into week 4, lecture 1. Okay. So, W 4 L 1. Right. So, the first thing what we have learned in the muscle in terms of its physiology is the sliding filament theory. Now, in the sliding filament theory, I ask this question, calcium, what is the signal which leads to the generation of calcium in the sarcomere. Okay. Now, this is where I said there is a connection here with the nervous system. Okay. Now, second part into the into this puzzle is there is a theory which we will not cover today, but just kind of give you a flare. It is called excitation contraction coupling theory. What does that mean? Now, I told you that there is an electrical signal here coming for the nervous system some electrical impulse which actually leads to, I have not described it, but I told you there is an electrical impulse. Okay. This electrical impulse is actually the excitation, 
that is this word. But then there is something happening here, change shown by delta, change in length, length shown by capital L of sarcomere. Okay. Or in other word, this is what we call as contraction. So, now add up the point to, it is this contraction which is coming here. And there is a way to couple these two together, which is happening here. So, that is why it is called excitation contraction coupling. I will come later into this because this is one small piece which needs to be discussed in detail because uh, this excitation contraction coupling has some other ramification in terms of how in the three dimensional geometry of muscle where you have lot of these fibers which forms a three dimensional geometry, how the signal really travels all across it. So, that is why at this point, unless I start with the nervous system, this excitation contraction coupling is not an easy stuff to deal with. Okay. So, but keep it in mind, we will come back to this from where this calcium came, what is the genesis of the calcium. And here I will again bring your attention back to the fact that those three excitable tissues in our body. I told you, you can classify the system into excitable and non-excitable. So, among your excitable tissues which are generating action potential, so here we mean those which generates AP or action potentials or the electrical impulses, you can call it, falls are neurons or nervous systems, falls are muscle and some of the neuroendocrine cells. And among these muscles, you have all the three muscles, skeletal, which what we are currently dealing with, cardiac and smooth. And our link, what I highlighted is out here or even as a matter of fact here. right and of course here is already a link out here like this so that means if these are excitable cells then these also generate their own action potentials along with the neurons so how the action potential of neuron interacts or or crosstalk with an action potential electrical activity of the muscle, because mind it, muscle has another additional task. All these muscles have another additional task that is mechanical motion or mechanical contraction. So, one has to draw a symmetry or some form of a sequence where you can connect two, three distinct stuff, which includes a signal from the neuron, a signal to the muscle and the muscle contraction. So, you are realizing it is a very complex process what we are dealing with. At this point, we have only dealt with this part of the story, how the mechanical contraction is taking place, but we have not talked about how this is linked to the electrical activity of the muscle as well as before that the electric, electrical activity of the neurons. Why is it important? Just practically think of it. Your muscle, suppose here, they are not twitching. 
who are on my muscle, they are not twitching. We are very fortunate, they are not twitching all by themselves. They will only twitch if there is a electrical or some signal, x, y, z signal coming, then only they will twitch. So, keep that in mind. So, the reason to put it like this is, so that you put your rational question at every point from where this is coming, then only this whole thing will make sense. Now, what we will do next is, I will move on to the next slide, where we will first, before I touch upon this, we will talk about the length tension, here tension we meant by not your physical tension, mental tension is basically the force generated by the muscle, length tension. relationship of skeletal muscle. So, in terms of the length tension relationship, we will be dealing at the level of the sarcomere. Okay? because this is the smallest unit. So, we will deal with the sarcomere and you can extrapolate it at the level of muscle. So, in the sarcomere, if you remember it, there are three possible situations. Okay? One is a situation where say for example, if this is the sarcomere, where the line which I have drawn are the actin thing and this is the z line. Okay? This is the z line, imagine and this is your A stands for actin and in between you have the myosin filament and here you are forming the cross bridges like this, fine. This is one possible configuration. The other configuration could be when it shortens, say for example, it, it shortens out. Okay. So, this is if I call this as position say optimal position, where you have this situation. So, it becomes shortened out. When it shortens out, so what will happen? These two filament, actin filaments, this is the A okay, and this is your myosin and this is the myosin head, what do you see? Let me just put it in pink. So, this is where the myosin heads are interacting with the actin filament. Now, when it shortens, it becomes something like this, almost the actins come so close from all sides, A stands for actin, this is the z line, this is the z line and here you are having the myosin present there. So, this is a short shortness of the sarcomere length has become shortened, fine. Short, uh, I am just putting sarcomere as S r, huh? short S r length. And the second state could be when this is stretched even further. So, something like this where uh, or something like this, okay. where the number of interaction has kind of you know reduced down. So, here you have the A's, A's, actins, 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 here you have the Z line, Z line and here you are having the myosin right myosin. Okay. So, this is when long sarcomere length. Now, it has been observed in these three situation, if you draw a graph like this, where y axis represents the force percentage, you can 
or unit force generated. If I keep it as maximum force, say 100 percent. So, you will see the, the depending on the sarcomere length, if I put it like this, so and this y axis is going for sarcomere length in microns, sarcomere length and micrometer, what will you observe is something like this, graph comes like this. So, you will observe at 50 percent, so this is when the optimal thing, the maximum force or 100 percent force you achieve when the length is optimal. Okay. And when the length shortens, so if I, if I talk about the shortened length, I am talking about this part, because length is increasing like this. Okay. If 1 unit, 2 unit, likewise if I put it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, likewise, I mean this is just imaginary unit I am putting. So, sarcomere length is at 50 percent when it shortens out. Similarly, when sarcomere length is very relaxed, it lies here and for maximum this lies here. So, what you observe here is sarcomere length is a function of the percentage force generation. When the sarcomere length is at optimal distance, then you generate maximum force, but if the sarcomere length is relaxed or kind of you know comes very close, that time what you observe is the force almost becomes half or reduces. Okay. So, this optimal length of sarcomere and the force generation brings us to the concept of, in brief, the concept of length tension relationship of the muscle and it is extremely important that you understand this particular part that the sarcomere length is a function of the force how it works. Now, I will bring you back to one fundamental concept where I started. I told you that the amount of force which is generated, say for example, if you look at here the percentage force I have given. Okay, okay. So, the amount of force which is generated, so this is in percentage, right. So, but theoretically speaking, this should be some unit in Newton or something, okay. Some, some physical unit has to be there. Now, we have talked about in the very early, if you remember, we have talked about how we started this topic. I told you that if you look at your heart, the cardiac muscle, they are doing like this, right. You can feel there your heart is beating. Second example I give you, you are eating the food and it is passing through your elementary canal, but you really do not feel the force getting generated there, right. Yet, there is a third example I told you about this skeletal muscle where you literally can see the twitching happening. And I told you that all these muscles are or could be classified based on, now here is that point what I am trying to highlight, muscle could be classified based on force generation. And this force generation is a function of myosin type. Will you agree with me now? Because you have seen the muscles are generating this force like this. 
So, that force generation is a function of what is the kilo Dalton or what is the molecular weight of that particular myosin fiber in that particular muscle type. Okay? So, it is based on the myosin subtype. So, that is why if you remember I told you now if I go back to previous week's lecture when I show you the hierarchy like here based on the myosin subtype that is a lecture last lecture of third week you can classify the muscle classify the muscle based on myosin subtype so you have different so the way they call it is that myosin heavy chain h c stand for myosin heavy chain and then they have types type 1 type 2 likewise you know similarly myosin light chain apart from it you have classification of actin which actin are we dealing with and it is the permutation and combination there are several subtypes i'm just giving a couple of examples here that determines what will be the force which will be generated by the muscle and a different part of our body there are different kind of muscle subtype so one such example is of different myosin types four generation myosin and of course you can add the actin type but mostly it is based on myosin types based on the force generation these are classified into fast twitch and slow twitch fibers. Now, what are these fast twitch and what are these slow twitch fibers? Okay. We will talk in the next class about what is the fast twitch and what is the slow twitch and little bit more about the myosin subtypes and how that brings us to another form of muscle within the skeletal system what I just very briefly mentioned you remember the interfusal fiber and that is exactly where we will slowly move on to the nervous system and I will tell you the reason in the next class. Thank you.